In our last video, we added the functionality so that when we clicked on our objects, they would turn off. And we added a UGUI text element that would display the names of all the items in that list. So what I want to do in this final video with lists is add in four buttons that are going to select elements out of that list and reactivate those objects as well as remove them from the list. We're going to select the first object, the last object, a random object, or all the remaining objects that are in the list. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I get started on the coding, I'm going to really quickly create my four buttons for the first, last, random, and all selections. With all four of the buttons created, I now want to add flow machines to all the buttons. If I select all four buttons, I can add the flow machines in one step. With this done, I want to create a new flow macro in my macros folder. I'll name this macro first button and then drag it into the flow machine on the first button in the hierarchy. In the flow macro, I want to select the first object in the list, turn that object back on, and then remove it from the list. But before I do that, I need to do a little error checking or error prevention. I need to check that there is a first item in the list. If the list is empty and I try to get an element from that list, Unity will throw an error. So first I'll add an onClick event so the code will run when the player clicks on the UI button. Then I'll add a get seen variable unit and choose the clicked items variable from the dropdown. Next, using the fuzzy finder, I'll add a count items unit that will return how many items are in the list. Using a greater than unit, I'll compare this value to zero and connect the output to a branch. If the branch evaluates as true, meaning the list is not empty, then I want to turn on the object with a game object set active unit, making sure the value is set as true. I also need to tell this unit which game object to turn on and I'll do this with a list get item unit. Now the list get item unit needs to know which list it's getting an item from. So I'll connect it to the get variable unit. In this case, since I want the first item in the list, I want the item with the index of zero. It's important to note that the lists start counting at zero, not at one. The terms zeroth and first are often used interchangeably, which if you're new to lists can be a bit confusing. The last step with this flow macro is to remove the item from the list, and I'll do this with a remove list item unit, which does not require knowing the index. Instead, it uses the list item as an input. Let's quickly test this to make sure it's working. Pushing play and clicking on multiple objects, I can see the list of items being created and the items turning off. Then pushing the first button, I can see that the top item in the list, in this case a cube, will turn back on. Each time I push the button, one more object is turned on, and is removed from the list. If I continue to push the button with no objects in the list, the code handles the situation without throwing an error. Next, I want to work on the code for the last button. So I'll create another flow macro and name it last button. I'll also drag it into the flow machine on the last button game object. The code for this flow macro and all the other flow macros is very similar to the first button macro. So I'll open up that flow macro and copy all the units. Pasting the units into the last flow macro, I just need to make a small change. Namely, I need to get the index of the last item in the list rather than the first item. The count items unit already tells me how many items are in the list, but since indices start at zero, I need to subtract one from the count to get the index of the last item. For example, if there are four items in the list, then the last item has an index of three. If there are 10 items in a list, then the last item has an index of nine. And that's all I need to do for this flow macro. The next flow macro I want to create is for the random button. I'll create a flow macro and name it random button and drag it into the flow machine on the random button object. Once again, this code is going to be very similar to the first button. So I'll paste in the units from that first button macro. The only real change that needs to occur to the code is choosing a random index in the list. I'll use a random range unit to do this. It's worth noting that there are two of these. And in this case, I want to make sure to choose the one that has an integer inputs and outputs since the indices of the list are integers. I'm going to insert the random range unit just after the branch. The minimum value for the random range will be zero, and the maximum will be the count of how many total items are in the list. This works because random range is inclusive of the minimum, meaning it could give zero as a result, but it is exclusive of the maximum, meaning the largest number to come out of the unit will be one less than the count, which in this case is the index of the last item in the list. Pretty perfect, and may shed some light on why lists start counting at zero. The last step is to connect the output of the random range unit to the list get item unit. Moving on to the last flow macro, and no surprise here, I'm going to create a fourth flow macro and call it all button. I'll drag and drop that onto the flow machine on the all button object. Once again, this flow macro will be very similar to the first button. 
So I'll paste in the units from the flow macro to give me a starting point. In this flow macro, I need to loop through every item in the list and turn the object back on. I'm going to do this with a for each loop. While iterating or looping through the list, I can't remove items from the list or modify the size of the list in any way as this causes an error in the for each loop. So I'm going to delete the remove item unit. Next, I'm going to insert the for each loop directly after the branch and before the game object set active unit. Connect up the get variable unit to the for each loop and then connect the body flow output of the for each loop to the game object set active unit. The body flow is the flow that will get called for every item or element in the list. So far, this will turn on every object in the list, but it will not remove the objects from the list. Clearing the list needs to happen only after looping through the list. So I'm going to drag out the exit flow. Then in the fuzzy finder, I'll go down to collections, and then I'll choose the last option, which is clear list. This unit does exactly what it sounds like. It simply removes all the items from the list. I'll also connect the get variable unit so it knows which list to clear. I'll push play to test my code. Clicking on a few objects to load up my list, I can then test my buttons. If I click on the first button, a cube will reappear. If I click on the last button, another cube will appear. If I push the random button, who knows what will show up. If I click on several objects and reload my list, and then push the all button, all the objects will get turned back on, and you can see that the list has been cleared. So there you go. I've created buttons that select the first, last, random, and all items in a list. This is a little bit of a silly example, but these kinds of operations are something that I do all the time when working on my own projects. That is finding an object in a list and then doing something with or to that object. So I hope that was helpful. And if there's something more you'd like to see about lists in Bolt, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you'll subscribe and join me for my next tutorial video.